Hey, what's up everyone? Today I am going to show you how to make this garlic and herb roasted turkey. So let's rock it out. The first thing that I did is set up my little mini food processor and I put it over there to the side. Here I have a half of a cup of minced garlic. It's the pre-minced kind. You can also use 20 to 30 fresh cloves if you would like. The next thing I'm doing is zesting up my lemon. I'm going to have the zest from one lemon all together and just a quick little tip for you here. The easiest way to use your zester is just to put the zest on one side of your lemon and your thumb on the other side and pull straight down the lemon. Put a little bit of pressure on your thumb and that will make your zesting go so much easier today. Go ahead and move that zest into your food processor and let's move on to our time. This is no certain measurement here. It is just a little bundle of time and I'm going to pull backwards down the stem to pull all of the little leaves off. The little tip part that is more tender is perfectly fine to go ahead and just add into the food processor. So go ahead and do that like 20 more times with the other stems and go ahead and add those into your food processor. Here we go, time going into the food processor. The next thing that I have here is some fresh rosemary and I have like three pieces that are about two inches long each. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the thyme and pull backwards down the stem just to remove the leaves. Again, if you have some really kind of tender pieces at the top, don't worry about those. You can just pinch them right off. Gather all of those leaves into a tiny little bundle and then run your knife across them. Here's another quick little tip for you everyone as you are cutting your herbs and this goes for pretty much any herb you only want to run your knife across them once or twice unless it's rosemary then you can maybe go three times if when you move your herb from your cutting board look there there should not be a pile of green oil here we have 10 sage leaves and I'm just going to kind of roll those up and it would be easier to do five at a time but I am just going to go ahead and bundle them all together. Then I'm going to slice right across them making nice little ribbons. Not that that matters because they are going into the food processor also. But just so you know, this is called a chiffonade, some little ribbons with our beautiful leaves. I'm going to go ahead and turn those sideways and go across them one more time. Again, not leaving the oil from my herbs on my cutting board, but putting it into my food processor where we want it. I'm going to go ahead and put these last little bits in there, and we are going to move on to our shallots. So here I have one pretty good sized shallot. You could use two small, of course, and these are also going into the food processor. So I really don't have to do any like dicing type of chopping here. But what I am going to do is remove both ends from it as well as the peel and then just cut it in half so that it blends up nicely in my food processor. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one and move on to my spices. Here I have two and a half teaspoons of black pepper and a teaspoon of each of cayenne and red pepper flakes. Those are going into the mix. And now back to our lemon. Hello again. I'm going to go ahead and remove the juice from this guy. So when you see juice from one lemon in a recipe, what we're generally looking for or hoping for is about four tablespoons. And a word to the wise, it is smarter to squeeze this over a bowl and not over your food processor so you don't end up with seeds. Next, I'm adding a half a cup of brown sugar, and I'll come back to that in a minute, along with a half of a cup of kosher salt. And yes, it does have to be kosher or the measurement changes. I'm also going to add in one teaspoon of allspice. And don't worry, this is not going to take over the flavor of your turkey. It's just going to be a lovely little background flavor. I'm going to go ahead and add in a half of a cup of olive oil to this mix and then put on the lid and give it a nice little blend. I'm using the pulse option here until it looks something like this. Once it's nice and mixed together, you're going to add an additional half a cup of olive oil. So we have one cup of olive oil in there total. Go ahead and mix that in until it is well mixed and looks something like this. Set that over to the side and let's get ready to hook up the turkey. So here is turkey and he is definitely excited about what's going on here. He's going to be so yummy. But here's something about turkey that you may not realize. That marinade will not penetrate his skin and get down to the meat. 
So what we have to do is kind of create some little pockets between the skin and the meat. Now the easiest way to do this is to kind of just lift the skin up and pull the meat down with your other hand. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of using my fingers to form a little pocket. See that? Just like a pair of jeans, right? Little pocket right there inside of turkey and you see this nice little opening now where we are going to add our marinade. That is going to go right in there and that is going to allow all of that beautiful flavor and the salt and the brown sugar, which by the way are going to help lock in some of the moisture. So it is super important that we are getting like a little bit of salt and some of that sugar on the meat. The next thing that I'm going to do, of course, is going to be the other side, the other breast, and then I'm going to do it from underneath also. This is like your choice, but do be warned that if you do it from underneath, sometimes, sometimes, it lifts the skin a little bit when you roast it, and you can look at my end picture and decide if you care about that tiny little inch showing or not. Once you get the entire breast done, go ahead and hold turkey upside down and put a little bit of the marinade inside of the cavity. And then we're going to lay turkey down right on his little tummy and we're going to rub that marinade on the inside of his rib cage. So that is another way that we are getting some flavor into that breast meat. Nobody likes dry, flavorless turkey breast meat, right? So now we have all this beautiful marinade that is going to go on the outside of turkey. And while we're on turkey's back, we're going to go ahead and tuck these wings in. The wing tips will totally burn if you don't tuck them in. And turkey likes to relax when he's in the oven, so get him in a relaxing position, right? Go ahead and rub the rest of the marinade on the outside of the turkey. And if you want, you can also tuck a little bit down into those legs, which I am going to do because, hey, I like flavor. That marinade that we are putting on the outside, that bit of brown sugar that I told you I was going to come back to in a minute is going to really help us get that golden brown turkey goodness going on. The sugar will caramelize. It will be gorgeous. So here, one of our final steps, I'm going to take a string and just let's help turkey be a little bit more modest because what turkey looks like before he goes in the oven is what he's going to look like on your table. So we don't want turkey all spread eagle. Ha! Uh, that was punny. Anyway, yeah, let's move on. Go ahead and tie those little knees together, little turkey thighs getting tied up here. You can tie up his wings and stuff too if you want to. That is totally up to you. So now that I have turkey all nice and tied up, I am going to thoroughly cover him in plastic wrap and he is going to go into my refrigerator. 12 hours is fine, up to 24 hours is fine too. But I am going to again give you a word of caution which is make sure that you thoroughly cover turkey because if you don't, everything in your refrigerator including that beautiful pumpkin pie that you worked so hard on is going to taste just like this garlic marinade. Your butter, everything will be ruined. So do thoroughly wrap Mr. Turkey before you put him into your fridge. So here we are the next day and see what happened. You have like this little kind of V spot where like, you know, turkey got his head cut off. But like we don't want to be thinking about that at the Thanksgiving table, right? So what we're going to do is take some of our delicious stuffing and we're going to stuff it in there and make it all nice and round and pretty. And by the way, the rest of my stuffing is being cooked in a casserole dish because we're slow roasting. And if you slow roast a stuffed turkey, you will probably end up with salmonella and nobody wants that. So if you are slow roasting, please make sure that you are doing your stuffing in a casserole with the exception of the neck of the turkey, which look how much prettier that looks. Nice and round and that is what it is going to look like when it comes out of the oven instead of having kind of like that, you know, dented in thing, which I definitely don't like the look of. So turkey is pretty much ready to go into the oven, but I do want to give you a few tips before we stick them in there. So. Number one, we are going to be roasting at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Any temperature between 250 and 325 is considered slow roasting, but the CDC says 325 or above is what is safe. I will be doing mine on 325. 
I will be basting turkey every 40 minutes. When you baste, you want to do oil only, not the liquid that's coming off, because the liquid will stop turkey from browning. So what I do to solve this problem is instead of using a baster and sucking up the juice and then separating the oil and going through that whole thing, I whip out my PAM, like whatever cooking spray you happen to have, or your olive oil spray. Give Turkey a spray with that every 40 minutes. Same difference, right? He just needs a little bit of oil, like he's sunbathing, like every 40 minutes, right? Moving right along. The CDC's current recommendation is 165 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature taken in the breast as well as the thickest part of the thigh. So do keep in mind that the recommendation is currently 165. In the past, it was 180. So a lot of these different recipes that you're going to read are going to tell you 15 to 20 minutes per pound, whereas I'm going to tell you 10 to 15 minutes per pound because I am shooting for that 165. I will leave a link down below in the description so that you can click on it and go to the CDC's website and check the current recommendations if you would like to check that out for yourself. So what I do is I figure 10 minutes per one pound of turkey. So if you have a 15 pound turkey, you're looking at 150 minutes or two and a half hours and that is when you should start checking its temperature. All we're doing is checking the temperature. That doesn't mean turkey is done. That means that's when we're checking. Once turkey is done, go ahead and pull him out of the oven and let turkey rest for at least 30 minutes before you even think about cutting into him. And here's an awesome chef's tip for those of you who have stuck around until the end. If you are not worried about presentation and you will be cutting your turkey up in the kitchen before you put it on the table, you will get an even juicier turkey breast if you roast him on his side. So you're going to do half the time on one side and half the time on the other side or roast your turkey breast side down. Hey, that is it for now, everybody. I hope that you loved this recipe. And hey, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Happy cooking, everyone.